Hello everybody, my name is Ian, Starship Adventures, and back today again with another product review. And today, my favorite mobile radio. I've been a ham radio now for three or four years, and I'm starting to really get an idea for, you know, which radios I would buy and which ones I would stay away from. And the one that I chose to buy, and I've now bought two of them and have had very good luck with them, uh, and uh, is the uh, the TYT, uh, the TH9800. And we're going to be talking about this in depth here for the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, if you're looking for a really good all-around radio for ham radio to both communicate on the nets and explore a little bit uh, on the frequencies, this is the radio right here. Um, it's hard to get a full 50-watt VHF radio um, and get it for under 200 bucks, and that's what you can do with this radio. Uh, this is a Chinese radio. It's made by TYT, uh, and uh, they uh, they make pretty good radios. They make my favorite portable radio too. Uh, so there's, uh, I believe they make uh, radios that are of decent quality, considering what you're paying for them. Anybody that's buying a radio out there, you 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 have to look at what you're paying for it, uh, and you have to look at uh, what you're getting for what you're paying. Uh, if you spend four or five hundred dollars on a, a Yazoo or a uh, an ICOM radio uh, or a Kenwood even or a Motorola, uh, if you've got that kind of money, you're going to get a superior radio. You're going to get something that's going to last forever that you can pass down for three generations. Uh, but you're going to spend a lot of money on it. This is something you can get for two hundred bucks. Throw it in your car, and if you get three or four years out of it. Uh, that's good. I, I think you'll probably get more than that. Um, I have had both of these now for coming up on two years. I bought the one, uh, went back a few months later. I loved it so much and I bought a second one. Um, some of the great features to this radio, and I, and I got to show you, I'm just going to show you the radio first and then we're going to go through the features. Um, this is a two-part radio and, and what makes that really nice, and you can see I've got one actually on and running back here. Uh, that's what I use for my shack base radio. It's also what I use for my car radio. This one I pulled out of my car this morning so I could show it to you. Uh, it has the standard power plug uh, and standard antenna adapter and a headphone plug. None of the frills, but it's got everything that you need. On the front, uh, it simply has a, uh, you know, a telephone style plug uh, that you can plug in that and uh, that goes right to the head of the radio. Now, the head of the radio, this is all there is to it. The mic goes on the head. The speaker is on the body. That's important to note. The head can go right on the front, and you can use it just like a regular radio. Okay, I want you to know that. It comes in the box like this, but it comes with the cable so that you can disconnect this and put this behind the seat, under the seat, in the trunk. Note, the further away you mount this, the more likely you'll need to mount an external speaker, which I recommend anyway uh, if you're into doing a lot of talking and listening in the car. External speakers tend to do a lot better uh, to get the, 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 the actual what they're saying, uh, and make it clear enough that you can hear it while you're driving down the road in the car. Now, this radio uh, and is uh, four bands, it's quad band. It actually transmits on four bands. Now, when we talk about this radio, I want you to understand it receives in AM on aircraft, but pretty much it's an FM radio. Even the 10 meters and the 6 meters and the 2 meters, it's all FM or frequency modulation. So you're not going to buy this radio uh, and go jump on 10 meters and start talking all over the band. Uh, it's a little more selective. You are on FM. You're not on uh, single sideband, upper sideband, lower sideband. So that being said, um, it's great, but you're listening and transmitting in FM or frequency modulation. I find the 10 meter and 6 meter things that this radio does to be really not all that helpful but I like to know they're in the radio. And I do have them programmed for call frequency, FM call frequency on six meters and things like that. But I've never actually spoke to anybody on them um, because my radio is a, is a uh, UHF, VHF, uh, two meter, 440 centimeter antenna. Uh, and so I could get a different antenna to screw on and I could talk on six or I could talk on 10. Um, 
but I'd have to first find somebody to talk to because, again, it's not on single sideband. It's on FM. That's the big drawback to this radio is it only transmits in FM. But if that's the only drawback, I'm, I got a whole list of things uh, that are absolutely amazing about this radio, and we're going to get into those right now. It does a very wide bandwidth. Let's start with that. You have to be careful with this. You have to make sure you're legal where you operate. Um, because this radio will transmit on a lot of frequencies. And when you get it, it's set for ham, but you can go into the programming and you can widen it out if you need to talk on other bands or frequencies that you are licensed to talk on, uh, then this radio will generally do it. Uh, it's a very, very wide uh, bandwidth. Uh, it will actually... Um, it, it actually receives and transmits on a huge swath of uh, both 2 meter and 70 centimeter. It's amazing what this thing does. It also receives other radio bands uh, outside of that. It actually transmits and receives anywhere from 108 to 180 megahertz, uh, anywhere from 320 to 512 megahertz. That's a, that's a huge wide bandwidth there, uh, swath there. And it also uh, receives on uh, 750 to 950 megahertz. So it'll actually receive way up on those upper bands. It also transmits and receives on 6 through 33 megahertz uh, and also 47 through 54 megahertz. So um, it does give you a lot of receiving and actually four bands that you can talk on as well. Uh, so I think that's an amazing amount of ability that a single radio would have. Um, normally we would just have a UHF VHF radio in our car talking on the repeaters maybe listening to local fire stuff maybe uh, um, talking on uh, GMRS or whatever but uh, but this one actually allows you to listen to a lot of other bands as well um, it, the UHF uh, transmit power is 40 watts uh, that's pretty good. Uh, it's hard to find uh, anything on uh, 70 centimeters over 25 or 30 watts. So 40 watts. And I've tested this, and it puts out nearly the full 40 watts. A lot of times on Chinese radios, there's a conversion. I don't know exactly how it works, but they, when they first started putting out 5-watt bow things, they would put out about 3 watts. Uh, and uh, they've slowly gotten better. The latest TYT I bought... Uh, portable says it's a 10 watt radio and it puts out a little over nine watts so we're getting close uh, this one says it's a ten, it's a uh, 50 watt on two meters and I'm I find it to be right at 50 watts so it, it does put out what it says it puts out the heat dissipation is pretty good on it but if you're going to use it for like net control or where you're going to be just carrying on a conversation going down the road for hours you definitely want to have it ventilated well and you want to use the lowest power possible to get the job done uh, so that the radio will run cooler it has 809 memory channels now that's great i mean i i go in this thing i use chirp to program it i download all the different frequency sets from all the places i go and i have my frequencies banked Zero through 100 is local, 100 to 200 is up the road, 300 to 400 is Atlanta, 500 to 600 is up in the mountains where I go up there. Uh, and it works out really well because I keep everything grouped up in banks of frequencies. So uh, a great idea with, with a radio like this, you can have everything programmed into it ahead of time. I even have uh, all kinds of different uh, stuff programmed into it that I just receive that I'm just looking to see if I can receive anything on. So a great radio there. Um, the thing that makes this radio different than probably any other radio you've owned or used is the fact that it's two radios in one. Just like the Baofeng and, and, and the TYT portables are two radios in one. They'll receive two channels at one time. You can listen to two different things at once. This one does the same thing. This one does it even better, though. You have volume squelch and channel volume squelch and channel it's two completely separate radios these four buttons are for this radio these four buttons are for this radio it's like installing two radios in your vehicle now I, to me that's worth it I like to keep the fire channel on the one side and I've got it disabled so it only receives. But I keep that on the one side because I like to hear what's going on with the fire channels in town. And then on the other side, I keep the local repeater or, or the 5-2 or whatever I'm monitoring 
uh, that I want to monitor with ham radio. So it allows me that. It also has a scan mode that you can program for priority, time, or uh, where it stays on the channel until the transmission is over. There's three different modes of that. And uh, the scan function does work pretty good. I use it. Um, it it's a little annoying, but if you get it set up right, uh, it does work. Um, I think that the independent controls for left and right are probably one of the neatest things about this radio because I can set the squelch separately from my left channel as I can my right. Anybody knows if you use UHF, you, you could get some really bad interference or you could get some other stations coming in, but your UHF, your VHF side's doing fine. So it's nice to have two separate squelch controls uh, that are a full sweep squelch so that you can make sure you get up above the noise. And um, it has uh, six buttons on the side here. These are presets. What I like about that is you can set this thing up for different operations. Let's say you want to set it up for your Aries team, or you want to set it up for a disaster response, or you're on the search and rescue team, whatever. You set it up the way you want it for that emergency, and then you program it into A. And then next time an emergency comes in and you need this radio for that purpose, all you do is hit A and it, it literally, everything switches into that mode for you. And there's six of those. That's a really cool function that I use as well. Another thing this radio does, it's completely something you probably have never seen before in a mobile radio uh, unless you went up over four or $500. It has cross-band repeat. That's a really, really neat function. I use it here in the shack in the evening, okay, when there's a, uh, uh, there's a net going on and uh, I want to go in and sit with my wife and uh, watch TV or I want to go into my bedroom and lay down, but I still want to finish with the net. That's where I use the crossband repeater. Now, I'm ventilated well. I've got an air vent that comes right down. You can actually see back there the little silver vent that comes down. And I actually have these two or three radios force ventilated right from my air conditioning vent. I do that on purpose because I use this on crossband repeat. And I don't want it to overheat. And when you're on crossband, remember, your duty cycle is 100% on one side and uh, probably a lot less on the other. But... Uh, what I always do is I set my UHF side to talk to me locally, and I turn it on the lowest power possible. And then I take the UHF, the VHF side, set it on the repeater that I want to talk to, okay? And I set it on the power that I need to get to the repeater clearly. And then I, I set the crossband. It's two or three buttons. Beep, beep, beep. There you go. Crossband is set. And now I'm in the bedroom with my little 5-watt portable talking to the repeater way out on the island that's 30 miles away so it's really cool i also use it for simplex nets and it gives me the power of a base radio in the hand of a portable and it's rf to rf and it's really cool so um it, it, and, uh, that's another really cool thing the cross band um repeater it has a lot of things I don't use. It has some kind of encryption, descrambler function. As you know, we really don't use that a lot in ham radio, uh, but it is it is a function of the radio that you can look at if, if you're looking for that sort of thing. Um, it also, it has the ability, you can set the busy channel lockout to enabled or disabled. What that basically does is it allows you to tell the radio, don't let me accidentally talk over somebody or you can turn it to where that function doesn't work and you can key up right over the top of somebody. That's up to you. Busy channel lockout, that's what I just said. The 50 group CTCSS, 104 groups DCS, these are great for some of your more advanced radio systems out there. Uh, the user defined D, uh, uh, CTCSS, basically it has tones that will open up your radio for certain repeaters. And your radio can also transmit a tone to the repeater to open it up because let it know that you're uh, a signal coming in that's good. Um, I told you about the detachable front face. It's really cool. The mic. Um, one of the things I got to tell you in ham radio, I'm really disappointed with some of the mics. You know, coming out of public safety, uh, we had these big Motorola mics. I mean, you you could really you could you could beat out a windshield to one of these Motorola mics. Uh, and when I got in ham radio, a lot of the mics are really cheap. They're really inexpensive mics. They really don't hold up well. 
uh, especially some of the, uh, the the Chinese ones that you buy to go with portables. They're really cheap. Don't ever spend less than $25 on a mic. Mics are really important to the process. And uh, the mic that comes with this radio, uh, I like it. It's a really good mic. It's heavy. It's got a little weight to it. Uh, it's got a uh, clip in the back. Uh, you can set it up however you want. That's held in with a screw that you can switch out with a hook. If A lot of guys like the hooks instead of the uh, rockers. However you want to do that. Um, I like it because you can use this. This is not just a DTMF pad. This actually will change the channels on the radio. You select what side you want to go to. Type in the channel number and boom, you're there. That in itself is worth a lot. Because a lot of these cheaper radios... Uh, that are a little cheaper than this one, the mic will not allow you to type in uh, that. All it is is a noise maker, a DTMF toner. It's all it really is. This one is a full function mic, and it's got your ABCD buttons. Those are those preset buttons on the side, and it has four programmable buttons at the bottom, too, that you can program specifically. Uh, it also has a lock and a light you have lock and light switches on the side, so you can lock the, lock this so that the buttons don't do anything. You can also turn the light on or off. If the light bothers you on the dashboard at night in your car, you can turn it off. Um, on the top, it has channel up and down, a function I don't use, but I hear a lot of people use that, so that's cool. Uh, it's got a lot of really cool uh, functions on the on the mic without being cumbersome. There's no buttons on here I accidentally hit all the time like I do on some other mics. And that's important to me. I can't stand when... I, I got a mouse here that's the same way. It's like a gaming mouse and there's extra buttons on the side and I'm constantly hitting them. Um, and I like when, when mics don't have those extra buttons on the side. I, I prefer when it's like this where, they, they're, where there is buttons, they're pretty deliberate. And you have to really get in there and hit them. And nothing actually gets accidentally pressed on this mic. So very, very happy with the mic on it. Um, it in the scan, it has skip channel. It has dual watch, meaning you can listen to two channels at once. Uh, it has talk around, which basically is just simplex. Um, it has an auto power off feature, which I haven't used. Um, it also has a timeout timer. Most radios have this. It's a good thing to set for like a minute or two. That way, if your radio gets stuck in the seat, it doesn't sit there until your finals burn out. Uh, it'll actually shut itself off, and people don't have to listen to you singing to your music in your car, because we all know how annoying that is. And uh, let's see, it's got a keypad lock on the mic I told you about. It's got um, uh, audible beeps that alert you to things over the thing, and it's cloning capable, which I thought was interesting. I haven't used that, because uh, it's really easy for me to just plug them in and program them. I got the programming stuff right here, on my screen but it that, that is a great thing you can do they are clonable if you if you uh have a company and you buy six or eight of them you only have to program the first one and um there is those side programmable buttons there's the built-in external speaker now i always recommend if you're using this for anything uh anything at all even just listening you want to go ahead and get you an external speaker and plug it in because um You'll never be happy with the sound quality that comes out of, a, of, of something like this. Even, even my, my $1,000 ICOM 756 Pro back here, um, I don't use the, the console speaker in it that much because I, I much prefer having a nicer speaker or if I'm contesting or if I'm serious, I put on headphones. But uh, the, the speakers built into these radios are passable. They work. It's if you want to really hear what everybody's saying, you, you probably want to get you an external speaker. It's got a fan on the back. It's an adjustable variable speed fan that will crank itself up as as the back of the end of the radio warms up. Um, again, you need to cool this. You have to cool this um, if you're using it for anything other than just hey ten four how how do you read me? If you're going to talk for ten or fifteen minutes at high power. This cannot be under your seat. You know how hot it gets under your seat in the car, in some cars? So just be careful where you mount this thing. Um, I suggest you put it somewhere cool, dark, and quiet. But if you need to hear the speaker, uh, some I know I got one guy that he just sat it in front of his driver's seat and just mounted it right there. It's out of the way. It's under his legs, but he can still hear the speaker. Um, whatever you have to do. It comes with a standard mounting bracket. 
um, and the mounting bracket will mount the whole radio or it'll mount just the head. It comes with a little adapter in the back just to mount the head. Um, it comes in a uh, standard box. Uh, you can get this. I suggest with any Chinese radio, okay, and, and here's a suggestion for you. Buy it on Amazon because you can send it back if it doesn't work. Amazon has been very good with returns. This particular radio, I've had two, and they're the same two I got, and they're working great. Before this, I had several of these other cheaper Chinese mobile radios, and they work for a month, and then smoke comes out. And Amazon's really good about helping me get my uh, get another radio or get my money back or switch to a different product. Um, so you want to keep the protection. When you go to eBay, I have nothing against eBay. Uh, for a used market, uh, eBay's amazing. For hard to find stuff, eBay's the best. I mean, it, whether you what, I mean whether you're buying um, spark plugs or cosplay, it doesn't matter. eBay's the best. But when you're buying something like this that you really want to make sure you're buying from a reputable person that has a warranty that's going to take this thing back if it blows up in the next 30 days, uh, Amazon will take care of that for you. Um, I, I had a different radio, uh, had it for 25 days, Magic Smoke came out, uh, was talking on it, and it woof, blew up and uh, got on there filled out the stuff on the on the thing and Amazon drop shipped me that same radio the next day I had it I'm a prime member I had that radio the next day my replacement radio I hadn't even back boxed the other one up yet and of course I boxed it up they sent me the thing I brought it right into a, a UPS and dropped it in it was very very simple so I I really think it's worth uh purchasing this stuff on Amazon if Amazon has it um, some of the other stuff is a little more obscure. It's hard to find on Amazon. Uh, that new portable from Bofang that everybody wants, the uh, the UV25, Bofang UV25, just now, as of this week, going up for sale on Amazon. It's been on eBay for a few weeks, but I would not buy it from eBay because it's a brand new radio, and the only way I'm going to buy it is if I can buy it, use the hell out of it for 30 days and make sure it's not going to blow up. And so I do that once it gets on Amazon. All right, and this is not an ad for Amazon, okay? They're not the best at everything, but they've done me pretty good lately. I got to tell them, I got to say that. Okay, so that's the TH9800 from TYT. And I, and I got to tell you, this is my favorite radio. It's a great radio, and it does really, really well. And I just want to tell you the highlights again. It, it, it transmits frequency modulation, or FM, on four bands, okay, and most importantly, UHF and VHF, um, and it also receives on six different bands. It, it's an amazing thing. Uh, it receives from six megahertz uh, on and off all the way up to 950 megahertz. What an amazing radio! If you're getting into ham radio and you want something uh, that you can use to listen to all kinds of different things, this is truly it. And uh, if you and your friend have one. There's some really cool stuff you can do with this because you could talk on six meter FM or 10 meter FM. Uh, and uh, and if you both had an FM radio and you were close by, that would be a neat way to communicate. So there's a lot of neat things you can do with it. Uh, I strongly suggest this one uh, as your first radio. If you're looking for my first mobile, my first base, this would be it. Uh, it is a 50 watt radio. So make sure if you're powering it externally, you're going to at least 50 or 20 amps. Don't, don't, uh, don't get skimpy on the amps. A 10 amp power supply will not adequately uh, do this radio at full power. Um, you, you want to do a 15 at the very minimum. I suggest a 20 amp power supply on it just to make sure that, uh, that you know, and there's a lot of use, you're not having heat issues. And uh, you don't want the radio struggling for power. Uh, because that reduces your signal and it also increases the wear and tear on some of the internal components So you really don't want to do that. I hope I've helped you guys today. I am responsive in comments um, I'm not so big yet that I can't respond to all my comments So send me a comment and I will respond and uh, I'll try to help you out the best I can on this radio As I said, I own two of these ones installed in my vehicle one is installed right here in my shack and I love this radio. It's great radio. And if you're looking for something to install, it's a pretty small thing that you have to find a place to install. I mean, it, that, that's really all that goes up in the front of your car. Um, I have in my car 
a, a, a hole where the, you know, like you put your sunglasses. It fits perfectly in there. So I just went in there and drilled a hole in the back and ran the wire up through the back of that uh, bucket. And it and then I took a piece of that uh, black rubber mat, you know, like you put in toolboxes or, or, or your silverware drawer. You take a little bit of that rubber mat and you just wrap it around the thing and shove it in the hole. And it fits, it, it fits in there like it's installed. I never even, you know, I had to screw it in. And if I need to pull it out real quick, I just went out there when I needed this and I just went in there and just wiggled it out, and here it is. And then when I go put it back in, uh, I'll put it back in again and, uh, and here later today. Uh, we're going to be going out to do some shorts today, and uh, that's going to be fun. So when we go to do that, I'll make sure to put the radio back in. Anyway, that's the TH9800. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please give us a subscribe and throw a thumbs up on this. It makes a lot of difference on the algorithm. And please subscribe to our other two channels, Carlotta Alotta, that's at Carlotta Arlotta, uh, C-A-R-L-O-T-T-A-A-L-O-T-T-A. -T 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 the links are in the description. And the other one is uh, my friend Joseph, who's also a co-host on this channel, and his is Scuffed Radio. That's at Scuffed Radio on YouTube. So check him out. The links are in the description. Guys, I do appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed this, well, rather long dissertation on my favorite mobile and port and mobile and base radio, the TH 9800. Uh, and I hope that this, uh, uh, this helps you make the decision on what you want. But I will also make a little disclaimer at the end here. These do get returned. I've went and looked, there's some negative reviews. There's a lot of positive reviews. It's not perfect like anything else. And it's coming from China. So buyer beware, use Amazon work the crap out of it that first month and make sure it's going to be a good radio for you. Make sure your SWR is right because, you know, that will send back a lot of heat into that radio and make it wear out really fast because, remember, it's not a $700 radio. It's $200 radio. Look it up on Amazon. They're on sale right now. As a matter of fact, I've got one pulled up right here, and it is $197.95. And so you can get them for just under 200 bucks. So enjoy the radio the radio community out there, and enjoy our other stuff here on the channel, too. Uh, my name's Ian. This is Starship Adventures, and we do a little bit of everything here. Sci-fi, two-way radio, technology, mysteries. We do a little bit of everything. Uh, so subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really helps us out. Have a good one, everybody. See you next time.